Okay, hi everyone, it's Chris again. I'm um, here to uh, make some more updates on medical school. Now, I wanted to uh, apologize for being gone for so long. Um, I've had some problems with my YouTube account actually loading videos on it. So, here's what I'm going to do to try to catch everything up. I had the videos from as far back as October, uh, and so that means that I have um, one, two, three, four, five videos. Um, the fifth one being the one that I'm going to film uh, right after I get finished doing this. And uh, what those are is basically I have a video for all the courses that we've gone through since it was really busy. I decided just to do one um, one video per course. They're about a four week course, so that should give me one, one video a month. I'll be able to upload. Uh, it's going to take us through blood and lymph, renal, cardio, uh, integument or dermatology, um, and then respiratory that we just got finished with. Uh, and then I'll make a new video um, in the next week or two, uh, starting on GI and liver that we're doing now. So I wanted to apologize for what happened with the videos. Uh, I had some conflicting reports from different people that some some of you were able to watch them, some of you weren't. Uh, my YouTube channel would uh, show the videos and it wouldn't show up and then they would get deleted. I had no idea what was going on with that. Um, and then finally, uh, school got really busy and my YouTube account were really quiet for, really, uh, for a while. Um, and so what ended up happening is I lost all of the... Uh, um, all the questions that you guys sent me before September 9th. So anything that was sent to me before September 9th uh, or before the video um, that is posted here, um, before any of that, before this video here, where is it? Right here, before that video, then there's, I don't have any questions from you and so I won't be able to, uh, to answer those. So if you sent me a, a question before uh, the video that I just pointed to, uh, and you need me to um, uh, answer that question again for you, uh, please send it again uh, and I'll get to it. But uh, I have about, um, from what I've been able to recover from my computer, I have about 15 different questions to answer. Um, and those have all been answered in the, uh, in the videos I'm going to be posting. Um, those videos are either going to be a remake, or I'm just going to be sitting here and just saying everything that was on the video to begin with. Or it's going to be a reposting of the original video. But either way, I'm going to answer all the stuff that needs to be answered. Uh, and so this this little clip here might be on the front of those videos. If it is, you're not watching the same video. You're actually watching a different video. Just wait for it to be over with. Um, and I'll have uh, here on the other videos, I'll have the title of them so that you know that they're a different video at the very beginning. So uh, that's all I have for right now. Um, I'm going to uh, get to filming the one... Uh, the most current one, and then I'll post the other ones with this little uh, um, uh, pre-video to the video on there so that you know what's going on in case you haven't been able to see the other ones. So uh, just keep watching and we'll get those to you. Alright, so here comes the uh, video for, um, uh, well, for this. Alright, so let's continue. So uh, here's what I'm going to do for today. I have uh, uh, to tell you a little bit about this course right here, Blood and Lymph, which is what this video is going to be covering because uh, it's supposed to be representing the time of medical school when I was in Blood and Lymph. That, uh, that video, unfortunately, was um, um, not able to be used. I'd, um, I had already saved it. I wasn't able to actually pull it back up and open it and uh, do any editing to it. So I'm just going to redo it. So this is just a a remake of that video, uh, so it's for Blood and Lymph right here. So what we're going to do is first of all tell you a little bit about that course, what it was all about, and uh, some things that happened during that period of time that I was um, in medical school at that point in time. Uh, second, I'm going to answer the questions here uh, from some of you. I have three questions to answer of the 15 that I have. Um, and four, I'm going to give you a uh, fun little Halloween type fact. Um, I know it's way after the fact, but it's a uh, interesting little Halloween-ish kind of fact. So, uh, so here we go. So, first of all, uh, Blood and Lymph is a course that covers, uh, um, of course, red blood cells, white blood cells, any kind of blood, the process of uh, blood being created in your body, uh, all the physiology related to blood and the uh, and the diseases and stuff that uh, that can happen to uh, someone's someone's blood. Either that be uh, leukemias with the white blood cells or problems with the red blood cells, uh, sickle cell anemia, all those kind of big uh, things like that is what uh, Blood and Lymph covered. Uh, it was a pretty good course. Um, it, was, uh, it was kind of tough. I, um, for some reason I didn't really think very well in those kind of, uh, in those kind of terms, so it took uh, some extra studying for me to actually uh, grab onto some of that stuff because it was uh, a little different with all the lymphomas and all the different kind of uh, uh, things that can happen, especially the leukemias and all the different uh, pathways that uh, cells take to become your blood cells. But 
but overall, it was uh, it was pretty good. Um, learned a lot, and so uh, so I enjoyed it. And so here we go with the questions for today. Um, actually, let me answer four questions because one of these is really easy to answer, and it uh, kind of relates to uh, blood and live. So one of the questions is about uh, it's about cadavers, and it comes from a uh, from a tenth grader. Um, and I don't know. Uh, Sorry, I don't know your name on this. All I have is just my print-off copies. I don't have any of um, any of your names or any of that kind of stuff. So usually I would put the name up here on the screen uh, so everybody can see it. But I don't have that for today, so um, so sorry about that. I'm not going to be able to do that for this series of videos. So, but here's the question. The question is about cadavers. Um, the uh, uh, viewer asked, I've always thought that uh, when people died uh, for a certain amount of time, after a certain amount of time, all their blood clotted. Um, I don't know if that's uh, that's always true, or if you could just please clear that up for me. So here's what happens with the cadavers. Um, yes, the blood actually does clot. Uh, it uh, it clots up uh, inside of the heart. It clots up basically everywhere. Anytime the blood settles and isn't moving, uh, it's going to start to clot. Um, that's also another uh, forensic science point of view that you can uh, put on that is that uh, if a body has been laying somewhere, the uh, bottom side of the body will actually be uh, red and discolored like a, like a bruise or kind of like an Indian burn kind of thing. It'll be all red and that's because the blood has settled uh, and started to pull there. But yes, absolutely the blood does clot. Uh, that doesn't stop us from doing dissections or anything like that because um, it mainly, you know, the blood's just in the arteries and the veins and stuff like that and, uh, and the and cardiovascular system. So um, it uh, doesn't really stop us from doing anything. But yes, and, and also it's uh, kind of a good thing, I guess, for the dissectors because it... Uh, makes it really easy to tell where the artery in the vein um, is because they're, they're stiff from all the blood clotting inside of it. So, But it definitely absolutely does clot. So the cadavers don't bleed or anything whenever you uh, uh, are dissecting them. So that's, uh, I hope that clears that up yeah. for you on that question. Uh, sorry, that's my phone. Um, so here's a, here's a second question. Second question uh, is uh, from a junior in a community college. Now this was last semester, so I'm sure this class is over with for you, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to get to you in time. Uh, it's about uh, your chemistry course, um, having some trouble in your chemistry course, uh, and you're freaking out um, because you want to be your pre-med and you want to go to medical school and you're worried about what that's going to do is the gist of what um, I'm gathering here for that. Remember that one bad class does not equal failure to get into medical school. You can definitely have some some bad classes in college. Um, we've all been there. You know, things are Sometimes you just buck up against some things that are really hard for you to, uh, uh, to understand and, and um and learn, and that's completely understandable. One bad run at a class is not going to hurt you uh, going to medical school. Uh, if your GPA and your grades and stuff are fine everywhere else, um, and you show um, that you can do well on that subject on the MCAT, stuff like that, it can definitely uh, not going to be a problem for you to get into medical school if you have one bad class. Uh, if you get a low score and you want to retake it, um, you can retake it. I don't know how your school works. Uh, some schools average the grades together, so if you uh, retake it and let's say you got a D the first time you take it and you get a B. Some schools might average that you get to be a C and that would certainly look better than your uh than your B. Um and I think maybe possibly if you're uh, uh retaking a class and it shows up on your transcript and the medical school sees that, uh and they ask you anything about it, you could always tell them that you wanted to learn the material, you had a hard time with it at first, but you were determined uh and dedicated to learn it. And so you went back to uh do it again to uh you know actually uh, be able to uh, learn that material because it's important to you and you like, um, you like knowing your material and knowing your stuff. So, so you can definitely uh, explain what, what happened uh, and they're not going to deny you getting in because of uh, a bad run at a class like that. I don't think that um, that would happen. Uh, just talk to your counselor and if you have any problems with it, um, sit down with a, uh, uh, sit down with a, a buddy or a, or a tutor or something like that and and work through the problems over and over and over again until you get it. And that's how, uh, that's certainly how I do things if I can uh, get it the first time around is repetition over and over and over again. Uh, and it helps make things a whole lot better. Last one is how do, uh, how do I manage my uh, life, responsibilities, finances, and stuff like that as a medical student. Um, it's all about time management um, and, uh, and budgeting. The Halloween fun fact is about the disease porphyria. This word right here. So porphyria is a uh, blood disorder that affects the enzymes uh, creating the proteins to go in blood cells, creating hemoglobin. These people create porphyrons. Porphyrons have a reaction whenever people get in sunlight that uh, causes a whole lot of uh, problems, a whole lot of symptoms. Among those is abdominal pain, cramping, uh, light sensitivity, rashes and scarring, uh, and uh, nervous system problems uh, including seizures and mental disturbances. So uh, the 
basis of this disease is, is that it's an allergic reaction to sunlight, kind of like if you've ever seen the movie The Others with Nicole Kidman, um, same kind of thing, they have an allergic reaction to sunlight. So in the past, um, this is where the myth of vampirism came from, it was Porphyria. These people um, have all these allergic reactions to sunlight, and this was understood at the time, and so they were labeled as um, evil. Uh, the most notable case of this was Vlad the Impaler, which according to Wikipedia is where uh, we get our myths for vampirism. So that's your fun fact. Um, happy Halloween, about four months late.